Now we'll discuss some echocardiographic features of hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. The most important feature in hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy is asymmetric septal hypertrophy which produces a narrowing of the left ventricular outflow tract which is responsible for the obstructive features of hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. This is an apical five chamber view in hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. You can see the grossly thickened interventricular septum which is bulging into the left ventricular outflow tract. This is the anterior mitral leaflet. This is the interventricular septum. This is the iota. This is left ventricular cavity, right ventricular cavity and left atrium. Here you can see color Doppler in which there is a turbulent multicolored jet going across the left ventricular outflow tract. This will produce a gradient in the left ventricular outflow tract. You can also see that the echo texture of the septum is not uniform. This is also seen, the speckled appearance is also part of hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. When you measure the thickness of the septum, you have to check in multiple views and measure the maximum thickness of the septum and take it for calculations. The ratio between septal thickness and posterior wall, this is not posterior wall, this is lateral wall. In uh, uh, parasternal long axis view, you will get the posterior wall. So you will get a ratio between the septal thickness and the posterior wall thickness. That is important in assessment of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And thickness may not always be in the septum. Sometimes there is a variant of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy which is non-obstructive with apical thickening. Apical thickening alone can also manifest in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Those cases will not be obstructive. This gradient will not be there. So there are various types of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, obstructive and non-obstructive. This is an obstructive variety with a gradient across the left ventricular outflow tract. This is the gradient across the left ventricular outflow tract in the same patient. And you can see the gradient here, which has been measured as 26 millimeters of mercury. That is not a very high gradient. And uh, you know that the gradient in hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy is not a static gradient. It is dynamic. It can increase or decrease with various maneuvers. So when the gradient is low, you can increase it by provocable maneuvers like valsalva maneuver, isometric hand grip, standing. It will be difficult to record a good echocardiogram during most of these maneuvers because the position of the transducer from the apical location will be changing. Still, it is useful. There could be significant difference. For example, this gradient of 26 might increase to some 60 or 70 when you do one of these maneuvers or simply just standing up. During standing up, the left ventricular volume decreases. That is, venous return decreases. The volume of the left ventricle decreases. That is why the gradient increases in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy during these maneuvers. This is a Doppler echocardiogram from another case illustrating the typical dagger shaped or sickle shaped jet hypertrophic in hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. Usually in valvular obstruction it will be a tongue shaped symmetrical jet. Here you can see that initial gradient is less later the gradient peaks up. That is the usual feature in hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. And uh, this can increase still more if you do the maneuvers for provocation like hand grip, valsalva maneuver, standing up. This gradient is only 31. Then uh, in persons with uh, dehydration also, the gradient may be higher. Sometimes, especially in the critical care situation, persons with uh, hypovolemia may demonstrate obstructive features even without typical features of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. That has to be taken cautiously. 
because all gradients should not be taken as hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. You have to check the ventricular size, thickness, everything else before making a diagnosis of hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy because LVOT gradient is not that uncommon in patients, especially in the critical care situation where there is dehydration and hypercontractility of the ventricles.